May 5th marks the 200th anniversary of Karl Marx's birthday with commemorative activities around the world. The German city of Trier, which was Karl Marx's birthplace, designed zero euro souvenir banknotes with his head on them. And a Karl Marx statue was unveiled as a gift from China. In London, visitors went to the cemetery where Karl Marx was buried. During a commemoration in Beijing, Chinese President Xi Jinping said that theories that Marx developed still shine with truth and that China had made a correct choice in upholding Marxism in its development. Two centuries on, with huge and profound changes in society, why is Marxism still relevant? What has changed and what has stood the test of time with regards to Marxism when it comes to its practices in China? And what does Marxism with Chinese characteristics mean to the international community? Welcome to a special edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin. Joining me in the studio today are Zhang Xudong, a professor of East Asian Studies at uh, New York University, and Adnan Akfarad, China representative and a member of the International Relations Bureau of the Patriotic Party of Turkey. And from London, we're joined by Professor Graham Murdoch, a leading exponent of Marxist culture and sociology in the Department of Social Sciences at Loughborough University. Gentlemen, welcome to this special edition of The Point. I want to start with this question. You know, in China, when we talk about Marxism, we, we talk about it with a lot of respect, right? A huge gathering, a huge commemorative activity was um, organized just last weekend where the top leadership of China uh, all participated. But if you look at the situation in the West, if somebody switches on the TV and sees a discussion about Marxism, they probably change, change channel immediately. So why is that and what are the Westerners missing out on Marxism, Mr. Alfarad? Uh, I don't think in these days that the people in the Western countries, if they uh, find a TV program about Marxism, they will be interested in because uh, you ask that uh, what's Marxism? The Marx has described this. Marx said before me, most, most of the philosophers, they try to understand the world. Mm -hmm. And my ideology, the Marxism, is aiming to change the world. So that the Marxism is a tool to change the world. So that the, in today's West uh, world, they are in big crisis. The crisis is continuing. So that they, they try to find a solution. There was a uh, survey in the United States of the, at the youth, American youth. They are more interested in Marxism, socialism, all over the world. Mm -hmm. Now the socialism is arising. Right. So we're talking about a changing picture where young people are becoming more interested in the West about uh, Marx and uh, his theories. But uh, um, when people hear the word Marxism, um, Professor Zhang, what is the normal reaction and why do you think people react to Marxism in a certain way? Right. If by switching channels you point to the average daytime TV viewers in America, for instance, of course they probably will, won't be interested in uh, Why in is Marxism. it? I think if Marx Marxism, if it means anything to these uh, uh, viewers at all, it would probably the list would include violent revolution, uh, the communist dictatorship, gulag, uh, this uh, very oppressive uh, government censorship, lack of freedom, lack Extreme of democracy. Left. Uh, well, uh, if they have a clear notion of the left, then it would be something like uh, uh, this uh, uh, rob the rich and feed the poor. That's some kind of a Robin Hood uh, image. So, uh, but, uh, but let me quickly add to, to, to this. I think uh, we cannot uh, talk about the Westerners in, in, in general. For instance, I went to graduate school in the States. My advisor was a Marxist. Mm -hmm. scholar. Mm -hmm. I was trained by a Marxist. I learned a great deal about Marxism at a university. And now I have Marxist colleagues. I, I have Marxist students. So, so at a, as just sort of a, at the college level, I guess, Marxism remains pretty much alive 
and uh, a source of inspiration even. And but that also is about, part of the... Yeah, mm -hmm. talking about the general public, mm -hmm. you know, not the, the people who study, who are intellectuals, who, who spend time reading. Uh, the general impression of Marxism, I think it's still uh, rather a myth, maybe but, but even a little Xin, bit negative. Liu Xin, mm -hmm. uh, you are looking from China. If you look outside of China... Mm -hmm. No, I'm uh, asking you a question. Yeah, I wonder okay. whether yeah. that is the case. Uh, if you look in China, you cannot maybe understand. But the, now... China, Chinese economy is growing very fast, and the China is aiming to establish a democratic, uh, socialist, modernized country. So that the, everyone in the world, including the United States, in Europe, they are wondering how did China succeed? What is behind that? Mr. Xi Jinping, on 5th of May, he replied, the success of China rely on the Marxism. Actually, the, the, we prefer to use scientific socialism. Scientific socialism is Marxism. Mm -hmm. we, Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong, Tati, we do not prefer. We, we want to call scientific socialism. So that the China, Chinese socialism is showing that the Marxism is alive. Okay, so uh, we have already touched upon a lot of isms. <laughs> well, some people probably already yeah. switched channel. But uh, let me try to save the situation by going to Professor Murdoch in, in London. Professor Murdoch, uh, try to help us here. Uh, what are we talking about exactly when we talk about Marxism? Is it the same thing as communism, as socialism, or uh, what are we talking about here? Well, we, we need to make some very careful separations. There's a very negative uh, uh, popular view of Marxism which comes from the Cold War era because it was very much associated with the Soviet Union and the repression there. But now you see something new. Among the many uh, comments on Marx's birthday, there's a very interesting article in The Economist this week. The Economist is the Bible of the business community that says that Marxism is more relevant now than it has been for many decades. And the reason for that is that Marxism is primarily an analysis of capitalism. Marx spent most of his life trying to understand how capitalism worked and the kinds of contradictions that it contained and the problems that it would uh, present. Unfortunately, he said very little about what would come after capitalism. But he had a vision. He had a vision of a society in which the essential uh, resources for uh, everyday life would be publicly owned and publicly controlled rather than uh, the, the, the uh, subject of private property. And that, that vision has uh, supported a variety of different political programs. You can see behind me there the Parliament building in London. Uh, in, in England, we, we pursued a, a socialist, social democratic uh, position where we had a lot of public ownership of many of the essential uh, resources. Um, other countries uh, pursued a more uh, communistic version. Uh, so the politics of Marxism is very, very uh, varied. What has happened now, however, uh, England is a very good example, is that that socialist moment has gone. We, we now are living in a, an era of neoliberalism. We see the return of a very aggressive, market-led reconstruction of society, where everything is put back into private ownership. So and it's that which is making Marx relevant again, because yes. that's exactly the situation he described in the 19th century. What is the situation in China, then? We're talking about uh, uh, Marxism being the ultimate guiding um, principle for China's development for the Communist Party of China, and we're talking about uh, sinicization, if I can use this word, or, or, or uh, Marxism with Chinese characteristics. What's the story, to your understanding, that is happening to Marxism in China? Well, you, you, you have, a, you have a, 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 I think, a, a, a kind of a contradictory situation right now. Politically, the system clearly owns a great deal to the Marxist tradition. But you've also been developing a consumer-oriented society. Uh, you've been developing a, a market-oriented society. And so 
Marx would predict that you will have many of the contradictions emerging that emerged in his analysis. For example, the widening gap between the rich and the poor, uh, which is very much a characteristic of China as it is in many other countries now. So I think uh, Marx is relevant as an analysis of society as well as a political program. I see. So let me, uh, let me talk to, let me come back to he, uh, here in the studio to Professor Zhang naturally. Um, I think Professor Murdoch pointed out some of the uh, questions that people are asking about China as well. Are we a socialist uh, country? Are we a Marxist uh, country if we have all the, you know, the free market and they're talking about letting the markets play the decisive role? So where are we now? I think let's not forget that the, uh, the communist revolution in China was, of course, it was a mass movement, a political revolution led, led by the vanguard organization, but it was for the purpose to create a state form under which, in which capitalist development would, have be, would be possible. Industrialization, uh, the building of nation, uh, modern institutions, education, you know. These, uh, historically, in the West, in Europe, North America, and other parts of the world, uh, were developed under capitalist modes of production. But in China, the so-called semi-colony, semi-colonial, uh, uh, semi semi-feudal conditions, those historical developments would have been impossible. Mm -hmm. So you need a violent social political revol revolution to, stay, to create a state form in order to make these developments. And the China today, including the market sort of uh, uh, elements, we often talk about uh, negatively or critically, I think historically belong to this, this long, longer durée sort of a, 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 a processes. Therefore, I think she, President Xi has emphasized uh, very interest, I, interestingly that the Chinese socialism is not, it's, of course it's about uh, a, a continuation with the social uh, revolution at the level of superstructure, state form, you know, legal system, culture, mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah, but you're but losing but me there. But, but, but at, <laughs> the same time, at the same time, it must keep engaging in, in the uh, revolution in the realm of social of production namely industrialization, technology, science, and all these so materialistic the, dimensions. So the so-called <laughs> class struggle that Marx, is, Marx was talking about is actually in the production area. Is that what we're talking about in, in terms of uh, yeah. uh, bringing changes to, to the society, or am I understanding it? <laughs> its mode of production yeah. includes the state form, the form of ownership, as well as uh, forces of production, technology. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, Professor. Uh, yeah. yeah, Mr. Adnan. Uh, uh, I think that the misconception about the Westerns, uh, about the Marxism, is to uh, limit Marxism in Europe. This is the, the, the description defining Marx only in Europe, Europe centered. Uh, attitude is not correct. It, is, it does not explain the Marxism in China. If you look at this study, then Marx was uh, emphasized, uh, he worked on the capitalist country, the countries, capitalist economies, mm -hmm. but the revolution, the first revolution, Marxist revolution, done in Russia, and the second in China. Russia was then uh, maybe imperialist, but the feudalist, that it, it didn't clean. I think uh, we cannot accept Marxism like a dogma. We cannot stop mm -hmm. the Marxism. For that reason, I say scientific socialism. What happened? According to the Marxists, the, who are following the Marx, they were against the revolution in Russia. The Lenin so he developed Marxism. He adjusted Marxism in his uh, conditions. Leninism. Yeah, but we don't say that. He implemented the Marxism in Russian society. Okay. And then Mao Zedong, I think the Mao Zedong made a big contribution to Marxism. He 
discover the power of the peasantry because the Marx ideology was relying on the working Workers, class. Right. But the Mao has found the peasantry has a big energy and uh, he said that the, with the peasantry you can make a democratic revolution and you can continue to socialism. Right, right. Very interesting. Well, we're going to take a very short break and we'll come back and talk about the road that uh, Marxism has traveled in China and the road ahead for this theory. Stay with us. Welcome back. We have been talking about the 200th anniversary of Karl Marx's uh, birthday and my guests are Zhang Shidong from the New York University, Adnan Akfarat, China representative of the Patriotic Party of Turkey and from London, Professor Graham Murdoch from the Loughborough University. So let's, let's talk less about theory, maybe more about practice. As uh, President Xi said, and I think it's, uh, he's very sincere when he says that China is currently facing an unprecedented situation marked by factors such as heavy tasks of reform, development and stability. And the Chinese people must plan for the future and resolve practical problems using Marxism. Um, Adnan, you were talking about Marxism is used to change the world, so there you go. But <laughs> how do you use a political, a philosophy, let's yeah. say, or political economic theory to, to resolve the practical problems? Let's say um, deepening of reform okay. or, y yeah, yeah. How, how can Marxism yeah. help us yeah. in today's okay. world? That the, uh, there's a philosophy side. For example, for me, when I was uh, entered the university in 1976, uh, I met Mao Zedong's and very famous article on conflict, how to solve the conflicts. So that the, it was, I think, still a wonderful analysis about uh, how to solve the conflict. It's a Marxist analysis. It relies on the Marxist, uh, the uh, theory so that the, uh, you can make discrimination who is the first problem who is the second why how, is Marxist method different from other th theory other uh, thinkers Professor Zhang I think Marxists or Marxism as such put a, a great emphasis on the continuous development of, of forces of production science yes. and technology and all that but at the same time it, ha it, it, it emphasizes on the importance of uh, of uh, a form of ownership. So I think China today is in a position where it possesses the largest industrial base in the world, has a huge chunk of the world market and a very well trained labor force. Not only blue collar workers but also uh, intellectual labor uh, uh, force in, uh, in high, tech, uh, high tech, in science research, higher education and so on and so forth. No, at the same time, the state form openly, even passionately, embraces this Marxist notion of collective ownership. This intellectual, political, but also very, very practical uh, principle of overcoming the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, various social consequences uh, 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 stemming from uh, private ownership and uh, unchecked market uh, forces. This is uh, unique in world history. I think uh, where you, we had, uh, 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 the Soviet Union was very strong at a certain point, but I don't think it, 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 it could compare to this sort of a degree of integration mm -hmm. with the world market and uh, its uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, development of uh, industry and, and, and productive forces across the board. Uh, uh, so, so this unique combination of a state form, uh, a Marxist state, and a I social sphere, a labor uh, a productivity, yeah. uh, a human capital uh, that run along with, but still qualitatively different from uh, okay. capitalist uh, 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 lines. This is the sort of a, a uh, a peculiar uh, situation. Let me, let, just let me mm -hmm. give a little mm -hmm. bit of time to Professor Murdoch. Okay, who is, uh, I, I will say... Uh, you, you, talk, you will answer the question yeah. later. Professor Murdoch, what is your take on this, on this question um, you know, that uh, we are talking about here? Um, the uh, synthesization of uh, Marxism and the uh, problems it is trying to resolve, the practical problems it is trying to resolve for China. Well, let, let's take two uh, issues that Marx had a lot to say about. One, one was consumerism, 
and the other was the environmental crisis. The, the first volume of Capital begins with a, a long chapter where he criticizes the way in which objects have become almost magical for us, in which we invest so much of ourselves in the things that we own. And he's very clear that that is destructive because it stops us becoming fully rounded people. We narrow down our lives to what we can possess. So one of the challenges we have now, we live in a hyper-consumerized society. China has two of the biggest shopping malls in the world. So we have to do something about consumerism. The, it's, a, it's a destructive uh, process, it's destructive of our sense of ourselves, and it's destructive of our social relations. Mm -hmm. But it's also destructive of the environment that this hyper-consumerism is one of the major contributing factors to a worsening environmental crisis. And Marx was very clear about that. He lived in an industrial situation where you had enormous pollution because everything was driven by coal. Mm -hmm. You had incredible amounts of pollution. And you had incredible amounts of uh, degradation of, 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 of the land. And he was very concerned about that and his solution was to go back to a much more balanced economy uh, where we put back as much as we take out. Very what's interesting. What's now called a circular economy. Very interesting there. So uh, let he me has ask some you very practical suggestions. Right. Let me ask you about the international situation that uh, China is faced with. Uh, for instance, the, the, the more complicated international um, uh, geopolitical landscape and also the kind of uh, trade friction we're talking about between China and the United States, this kind of uh, tug of war between globalization and anti globalization rhetorics. What can Marxists, what can Marx tell us about that? Well, again, in, in the Communist Manifesto, there's a, a, a brilliantly written passage where he predicts globalization. He says that what's happening is that all the old borders are coming down and goods and people are flowing around the world without any uh, hindrance. That's exactly the situation we have now. But he sees that as part of the, the logic of capitalism. It's a way of extending capitalist relations uh, across the world. He's not so good or clear about how to combat that. One of the things that he had very little to say about, which has become enormously important in modern times, is nationalism. He, he has very little understanding mm -hmm. of how powerful the appeal to national identity would be mm. in creating uh, exclusive communities. Right. So what we see now in the West, particularly in Europe, is, is, a, is a, 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 a sharp contradiction between this globalizing process where the borders come down and a process where the borders are being put up again. So probably Karl Marx migrants, wouldn't, have the answers, wouldn't have the answers to yeah. these questions. No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't, he didn't okay. That. okay, my time is really limited. Yeah. Me, the, the, yeah. he, he dies Thank in 1883. So you, c you cannot expect him to yes. be yes. a clairvoyant that's why about everything that's happened yeah. since. Yeah. That's why we have to develop yeah. his yeah. theory with the time. Yeah. Let me come to you, Mr. Yes, Adnan. exactly so. Yeah. It's yeah. our responsibility Let to develop his ideas. Sure. L let me come to uh, you. I have very limited time. Mm. So is Marxism only possible to, success, to, to be successful in a few countries? I don't think so. That the, uh, I think the, now the world is uh, but turning. But so far we've only seen... But, but the, the turning that the Marxism, okay, that the China is then following the Marxism and it's a state, the official ideology. But the influence of Marxism all over the world is rising, arising. In, so in the case the, of Turkey? Yeah, including in Turkey. For example, now the Turkey uh, in a big problem, debt economy, foreign debt economy. Turkey has to manufacture. We need to manufacture, otherwise we cannot survive. How can you manufacture? You have to adjust the uh, production forces and production forms. The production form in Turkey now, it was obliged to Turkey by the Atlantic system, kills the production force. So it's going to be changed. So I don't agree with professor. I think 
China, the, uh, the professor also the, in London, consumerism or the other forms of state, they are not the subject of the Marxism. You can use but the, what China is doing. China is trying to develop the production forces. If you can develop the production forces and if you share the gains with the people, that's socialism. And we are very happy. I was part, participated in the Marxism Second World Marxism Congress in Peking University. Mm -hmm. I noticed that Chinese uh, the leaders, Chinese Communist Party, are persisting on socialism. So the, this is a real hope for human, okay. not only for China, yeah. also hope for yeah. all humankind. Yeah. And the, we, we are very uh, admiring, very much admiring Mr. Xi Jinping's uh, policies that he especially described mm -hmm. in the 19th Congress. Yeah, Professor yeah. Zhang, to wrap up really very quickly, in terms of Chinese youth, are they getting the story, are they getting the charm of Marxism in today's time? I'm not so sure, to be brutally what has honest. To be done? Uh, what has to be done is that uh, they should uh, 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 fully participate in uh, all aspects of, uh, of Chinese society, to be uh, an integral part of the new labor, the new human the new value system yeah. that is, is being generated. I think it generally yes, but there are very area of different pockets of uh, you know, uh, 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 things that we, we remain still unsatisfied. So there are right. still a but lot of But it's a to difficult to topic, it, right? It, it As is we very have difficult. seen today, which <laughs> <laughs> is very yeah, difficult yes. to make Karl Marx <laughs> very yeah. engaging, very sexy, but we tried a little bit. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much yeah, to my... We can say that the Marx uh, Marxism was created in Europe, but now yeah. through the Asia it became global. Right. Now okay. that the, uh, Hopefully the, it will yeah. be the future. The yeah, future, well. and Many we will see the classless uh, society. Right. <laughs> we, really, we really have to wrap it there. Uh, Zhang Shidong, Professor of East Asian Studies at New York University, Adnan Akfarat, China Representative of the Patriotic Party, and Professor Graham Murdoch, a leading exponent of Marxist culture and sociology at Loughborough University. And that is it for this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with L. Lake. Download the application called CGTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.